What's up, YouTube? It's Afterlife here. It came to you. Uh, it's my first video for a long time. I decided to do some basic deck profiles, advice, teaching people how to use some cards. Today I'm going to be talking about using power cards properly. reason why I'm going to go into this is because I see so many people misplaying their cards and wasting really good pluses that they could be getting. But anyway, here is what we got, guys, so far. First one I'm going to show is Book of Moon. A lot of people do not consider this a power card. Honestly, it should be. Book of Moon allows you to play around effect filler, allows you to play around a bunch of basic traps and stall cards. It's a really nice card whenever you need it. It's also a defensive play. It's probably the weakest out of the power cards. That's why I considered it first, but I still consider it a power card. Next one, Mystical Space Typhoon. Unless you're honestly being forced to go for a game at that period of time, set this face down and just kind of leave it there. Because, like, there's so many easy plus ones you can get off it. So many times someone would try to, like, graph on my face down or just random MST. Yeah, it's Gold Bear, by the way. It's sexy, I know. But anyway, they go to hit this card and it'd be like, oh, I chain it. Hit one of their cards. It's an instant plus one. It helps clear the field. It's just a really good card. Next card here, Monster Reborn. This is probably the best bluff card in the game. Uh, pretty much every turn, I will look at my opponent's graveyard, look at my graveyard, check their hand size, try to make them think I have this card, even if I don't have it. It's called bluffing. I swear, pros do this. And to be honest, it's obviously one of the best cards you can ever have in your hand. Like, it might be dead turn one, but even then, turn two, it's probably going to be a good card with all the exceeding, using the materials, etc., etc. Uh, the reason why you try bluff this card is to force your opponent to try to play a little bit more defensively and try to be prepared for this. They don't want you to randomly monster reborn their BLS mid-game. Next card, Dark Hole. This is probably one of the easiest to use power cards. I say this because all it is is set it, play it, it goes through, it does its damage. Unless you Don't use this unless you absolutely have to, though. There's so many times I see people go, Oh, look, they have one monster in the field, Dark Hole, and have nothing to follow up upon it. Reason why you don't want to Dark Hole is because you can hold on to it for a couple turns, survive a couple turns, and then drop it for the easy plus three, plus four, I think the greatest I've got off it was almost like a plus four. It was a field full of monsters, so yeah. Next card, Heavy Storm. Okay, this was last as far as spells go, because Heavy Storm is probably the least properly used card I see. A bunch of new players, as soon as they draw it, even if it's like one set card in your opponent's back row, they'll just go for it and play this. The reason why you should not do that is because you can hit heavier amounts of back row. Like, there's one time I waited a couple turns, guy set more back row, I got four back row with just one heavy. He didn't think I had it, he didn't have anything to protect them. Uh, also with Heavy Storm, always have something to follow up on it. A bunch of times people will play this card and will not do anything after that. They'll be like, Heavy Storm set one. Don't do that. Heavy Storm, do something, do damage whenever you can. Okay, the first out of the three traps I'm going to show, Mirror Force. Uh, Mirror Force is the first because I honestly believe it's the simplest to use. It's kind of like Dark Hole. Um, you just kind of use it whenever you can, but try to amount, get a good amount of monsters killed under this card. But it's a pretty good card. Next card, Torrential Tribute. See this used wrong a lot also. Uh, as a wind-up player, I've seen a few people just like, Torrential Tribute, Torgad, as soon as I play it, like, oh, okay, free Sand Gun, that's awesome, I get my Sand Gun for a couple turns later. Uh, Torrential Tribute, you gotta maximize your pluses off this thing. Like, there's so many times I've seen people flip it on one or two monsters. I've left this card face down pretty much entire games, because people start thinking it's a dead MST or something. And then you flip it whenever you think you can maximize off of it. Like, I've hit five monsters off of it, no problem, before. It's a really good first turn sand gun play to set this also. But yet again, try to maximize. If they go to, like, loop you, 
wait for the Zen Mighty play. If they summon, uh, let's say, Magician, they're going to go Magician, Shark. If they summon Shark, they're going to trigger Magician's effect. If they bring out another Magician and switch Shark's attack, I mean, uh, level to get out the Hunter, as soon as that Hunter comes out, then you flip this, because that's going to be a plus three to you. And then Solemn Judgment. Yet again, one of the least properly played cards amongst newer players. The reason why is because people are like, oh, it's a one-for-one one negate. You pay half your life points, you negate something. And that's not a good idea. You want this to be more than a plus one for you. Well, one for one. You want this to be at least a plus one or plus two. And you want to hold it off as long as you can because paying half your life points is a pretty hefty cost. Use it whenever you're going for game and you have to defend yourself in some way, shape, or form. Use it whenever you absolutely have to. It's a really good card to have faced on. It's a really good card to be prepared for. Thanks for watching. Please comment slash subscribe.